Sports Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Dominique Parker and Ron Dixon. The two of you have been together, get this, seven years. Wow. Still can't decide whether or not they should get married, so they've come to me for my advice. They gave me a copy of their marriage license with permission to tear it up should I find that their union is ill-advised. They've given me a compatibility test, which you took, which alarmed me. So I'm gonna talk about that later, but before we get to that, Ms. Parker, I'm gonna start with you. I know you love him, you've been with him seven years. Why are you hesitant to marry him? Because Ron stays out a lot. Um, he'll come home from work on a Thursday, leave out to go hang out with his friends, won't return home for a couple of days. Um, a couple of days? A couple of days, yes. One Thursday, we, he knew he was gonna have a storm. I waited for Ron to come home, he didn't. About three or four o'clock in the morning, doing all this rain, and our area was flooded. So in comes Ron, three or four o'clock in the morning, drunk as usual. Um, in his mind, he figured I was cheating or whatever reason. He packs all his stuff up, proceeds to go out the door, and like I said, it was flooded. So when he took one big step, him, his clothes and everything else went with the water. His clothes going one way, Ron went the other way. <laughs> so after that, Ron came in the house and proceeded to do it again. And my thing is, when Ron stays out, get drunk with his friends and everything else, that really bothers me. That, that It bothers me a lot. And I tell Ron, this bothers me. But still, Were Ron... Were you drunk rolling down the river with your clothes <laughs> because you walked out in a storm? Judge, I wouldn't say I was drunk. I had been drinking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I did come home because of the storm. Being that the area was flooded, we have tunnels. Right. And through the tunnels, you know, it was a water advisory, so I couldn't make it there at the time. Right. However, what I did do was be ill-advised to the advisory and still made it home. Even though it was 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I still made it there so that I can be with her throughout yeah. the storm. But once you got there, did you leave again while it was still flooding? No, I couldn't leave because it was flooded. But she said you were outside riding the tide. <laughs> <laughs> did nope. that happen? What happened was we had gotten an argument because I came in at that particular point in time. And rather than sit there and argue with her, I just decided that I would grab a couple of things and I would just leave. Now, see, that's nine pound of ridiculous. You've got a life-threatening situation outside the home. You've got a woman inside the home. You're going to risk your life and her safety by going out in a river because you don't want to argue. I you mean, see what the problem is Yeah, there? but why, why would I sit there and continuously listen to arguing and nagging? Because it's flooding out. <laughs> that's why you don't want to drown. I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like I would have been okay. I mean, I was in a vehicle. It wasn't as high as, you know, the vehicle was. So I felt like I could have just got some things. Even if I would have just sat in the car, no, I could have no, no. just camped out in the car for that night. I get tired of waiting on him. Yeah. This is... Is this, an, is this a frequent event? Yes. Give me kind of the expanse, what you see about his failure to come home. Once again, say he's going out hanging with his friends or coworkers, and he would go hang out, but it'd be... Okay, Ron, it's, um, I text Ron, okay, it's such and such time, he'll say, I'm coming, I'm coming, babe, I'm coming. The next thing you know is a day or two later. So it's like, it's always, I'm coming, but you never come home. But I know where he's at, is the point is, I don't care if I know where you're at or who you're with, if you're with your friends or not, you're supposed to be home with me. Do you, when you leave, do you stay for several days? No, not all the time, Your Honor. There has been On instances, occasion. no, there has been instances where I have, but she makes me do these things because of her attitude and her nagging and her complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm like this. I'm not gonna sit here and argue or fuss and fight with you. I'd just rather eliminate myself from the situation and let cooler heads prevail. What does she typically argue and fuss and fight about? Well, it can be just with me uh, being out with my friends. She know when she met me that I had a close uh, knit circle of friends. We all get together at various times. We go out, we drink, we hang at each other's houses. And sometimes it can be late into the wee hours of the night. It can be late because, I mean, that's well, something that come? we do. Oh, I've invited her on, on several occasions. However, she don't indulge like that. She doesn't drink like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, a lot of times when we're out late, that's not her thing. She's not right. one to stay out right. late a lot of times. So, you know, now, she Mr. knows Mr. where I'm let at. Let me ask you a question. You get a woman, you know, First of all, you're single, you're running around, you're doing okay. what you want to do. And you find a woman you like, 
and you bring her home and you install her in your house, do you alter your behavior at all as a function of the fact that your domestic situation has changed? Yes, I have. I've, I've altered my and behavior a great deal of a lot. And tell me how you've altered your behavior. What's, what's different now that you have her? Well, a lot of things is different. Like I said, I, a lot of this is in the beginning where I don't stay out like I used to. Um, I communicate with her more. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot mm. of times, I, I'd be willing to spend time with her. However, when I'm there, her thing is she's in the phone. That's my issue with her. Okay. She's either on social on media phone. or playing games. Now, Ms. Parker, now, now, wait a minute. Now, take a moment. Take I, a deep I, breath. I'm, I'm lean trying, back. Yeah, I, I'm leaning way back. Are you... <laughs> when he is home, is it a pleasant pace place for him to be? Or is there attitude or electronics and nothing else? Um, it could be our attitude in the beginning. My phone, because I'm always with my phone. He's not home. <laughs> That's her problem. She's with the phone. I'm with my phone. But when he does come he home, comes do home, you he put goes the to phone sleep. down? I get, he said we cannot communicate. I get more communication out of him when he's drunk and sleep. I can ask him any kind of questions, <laughs> and he will answer them. So, therefore, he can't say when he's home, he don't want to be bothered. He's on the same phone I'm in, he's in his phone, too. He's on social media talking to this person and that. He still, he just left his friends and still talking to them on social media. Yeah. So, what do I supposed to do? Yeah, I see what the problem is, but beyond that, I understand that, Ms. Parker, you've got some attitude problems that has to be addressed. Out of the blue, here she comes, steaming, steps in between me and the female. I'm his lady, why are you in his face? And I'm sitting there trying to explain to her that this is, you know, this is a mutual friend of ours, you know, this and that, and we're now, talking about a ceremony. Now, did you do a frontal assault on a woman you didn't know because you were concerned about what was going on? So, Mr. Mr. Dixon, I'm going to start with you. You say she has attitude problems, that she's angry and jealous. Give me your, the best story you have to illustrate that. Well, Your Honor, one time, we were out with some friends. We were at a bar. Now, this was a childhood friend that I've been knowing for a long time. She's also associates with a mutual friend of ours as mm -hmm. well. So we're out. And we're, we're conversing. She comes to me. She said, hey, Ron, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm letting you know that I'm having a graduation ceremony for my son. I want you to take my number, and I'm going to give you the, the number to get to the place where, you know, you can come and help us celebrate. Out of the blue, here she comes, steaming, steps in between me and the female. And what'd she do? I'm, what are you, what are you, what are you taking his number for? Why are you in his face? Give me the I'm full gesture. Lady. Was I mean, there anything else going on physically? I mean, no. It was just her body language, neck rolling. She was in the way. Uh, who is... Who are you? I'm his lady. Why are you in his face? Why are you giving him your number? And I'm sitting there trying to explain to her that this is, you know, this is a mutual friend of ours, you know, this and that, and we are talking about a ceremony. Now, did you do a frontal assault on a woman you didn't know <laughs> because you were concerned about what was going on? Yes, because Ron... Had, when he, he has a lot of female friends, grant that. He can have female friends, but I can't have guy friends. That's... He's one-sided. He's so one-sided. But every time we're at this place, he has females jumping on him, mm -hmm. hugging him. But if I would've did the same, like, the same place, I have a mutual Facebook friend. How you know these people? So he... Hey, Diamond, how you doing? Gave me a hug. And Ron watches from the front door, came in at me. If I see him hugging on you again, we're gonna have problems. Because but it's okay. Is that accurate? No, the difference with her female friends is this. The female friends that I have, we grew up, it's nothing sexual, it's nothing more, so it's no say. other type of attraction. Her guy friends, they're looking for something more. What, 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 now, 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 I'm gonna talk about that for a minute, because you have a specific concern with the res respect to the way she dances, which gives you ideas about the way she's dealing with the dudes in her life. So why exactly. did you tell me what your concern is? Well, Your Honor, one time, we were in a Mexican bar. <laughs> and, you know, the music is playing <laughs> and, and things like that. So her uncle wanted to go, we need to go get some more cash. He was drinking a little bit, so they asked me to drive for him, which is, I say, only about 10 minutes away. So we gets in the vehicle, we drive. I tell her, sit here at the and table. And you know it's ratchet, because she's smiling back. already. Right. We're coming back. You know. It would only take 10 minutes. Um, I tell her, watch my drink. We'll be right back. We're going to get the money and come back. So by the time we go get the money, come back to the bar, 
I goes to the table, I'm looking for her, she's nowhere to be found. So keep in mind, I'm looking around. Everyone is 5'2", five, 5'3". Five, Here I am, 6'4". <laughs> so well, I can see clearly across the dance floor. Right. I'm looking and I'm looking. And all of a sudden, you know, I see a little crowd gathering. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm looking and I see her. She's dancing with the guy. Now keep in mind, it's Latino music playing. Right. But she's up there like she's Beyonce. <laughs> Gyrating, shaking the butt, and is all the Was guy. she dropping it? Dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> was there any twerking? She was so close with this guy, she left no room for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it made the story worth it right there. No room for Jesus. Clearly, what we have here is two people who simply don't trust each other. So I got to figure out why is it you two have been together for seven years, but don't trust each other? For one, you were left alone, so I was hurt. It made me feel like I wanted to be there for you. Also, it hurt me and it put distrust in me because it made me feel like I couldn't trust you because you didn't let me know. So it was a mix, a mixed emotion there that it was hard for me to describe, you know? And and it just, it, it hurt me and it pained me. How would you feel if your partner had a habit of staying out all night with friends? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Let me tell you what jumped out at me. The one just red flag, alarm, five alarm fire thing I saw. My understanding is Ms. Parker had an abortion and did not tell you. Yes, she did. How did that make you feel when she had that abortion and didn't tell you? Did that change radically your decision whether or not she would be a person with whom you could build a life? Well, it made me feel... Tell her. Well, it made me feel like that, for one, you were left alone, so I was hurt. It made me feel like I wanted to be there for you to go through what you went through, because I know that wasn't easy. Also, secondly, you know, it, it hurt me and it put distrust in me because it made me feel like I couldn't trust you because you didn't let me know. So it was a mix, a mixed emotion there that it was hard for me to describe, you know, and, and it just, it, it hurt me and it pained me. But at the same time, you know, I didn't know what to think and how to look at you, but I, do, I did empathize and sympathize with you. Thank, very well said. Now, Mrs. Parker, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Tell him why you felt like you had to do it. Tell him. I had to do it because you wasn't there. How do I know you was at, you feel these things? You didn't show it. You was with someone else. So how do you think that made me feel? You're talking about your hurt and pain, but you not and don't realize the pain that you caused me. That was painful on me. That was very painful on me. Did you hear her? Yes. Did you hear him? Yes. This is how you have a conversation, people. This is how it gets done. This is a before your vows, not a break my heart. (laughs) So I want you to take 30 seconds, Ms. Parker, 30 seconds, why he's the dude. Despite all this, don't say nothing negative. Give me something to work with. Why might he be the guy for you? Because he's a driven person. He's a lovable person, and I know he is. I, I love him because who he can be and who he actually is. I love him for his flaws. I love him for everything he actually is. I don't look at that because there's genuine love there. That's not too good. <laughs> I love him for his flaws, but you don't say, you know what I mean? But, yes. you, but you're mad about his flaws and you're angry about his yeah, flaws. Yeah, but I still love him so for that, So what you're telling me is he's really flawed, but I love him anyway. <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> C-minus. I'm going to work with that <laughs> for a little bit. He said C minus. I'll take that. <laughs> Mr. Dixon, do better than she did. 30 seconds. Why you love her? Well, she's a very, very attractive person. <clears throat> she's been there for me. Um, I know that she will be there to have my back. However, I also know that, you know, during the times where we was going through something, she stuck in there. I love her because she's funny, she's witty. Uh, She's also a driven person, Your Honor. And, 
you know, she's she's always there if, if I'm feeling down to give me a word up. Uh, she's she's a spiritual person. She always have faith that I don't have somehow, you know, and, and she just keeps me going. You know, she, she says things, she encourages me, and she's always uplifting. Brother got an A. He got it. <laughs> Brother got an A. Got and that's what I love about him. And now I'm going to tell you what I think you ought to do about what we got going on right here. Should partners ever keep secrets from each other? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. As raggedy as your situation appears to be, I'm a fan. And I'm going to tell you why I'm a fan. You're two mature people. You're making young people mistakes. But I think that you have a, the capacity to go beyond that, especially because of what you said, Mr. Dixon. I think everything he said about you is absolutely 100% true, that you are down for him, that you're there for him, that you're witty, intelligent, and encourage him. I'm going to tell you what I wrote down when I saw your compatibility test. I said, neither one of them knows what it is to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You two are like LeBron James and Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be like Steph and Durant and LeBron and Kyrie. I know they traded him, but that's the only name I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're conducting a single life while you're trying to pursue a committed life, and that's not going to work. It's going to be the Team Parker Dixon if it's ever going to work. Team Parker Dixon comes first. You come home more often than you go out. And when he does come home, you reward him with your time and your attention and your love. Make him happy that he's there. Work to make sure that, and make her happy that you came home. Don't fight to remain single. Don't fight for your right to gyrate. It's not, <laughs> that's not what, you know, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't do that around because I got a husband now. And I save all my best stuff for over there. And that's what you have to do. You two are both trying to be successfully single while having the other one installed as a partner. That doesn't work. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's a conversation. It's a discussion. It's about how we're going to get to where we're going, not how often can I get out or how mad can I get, how low can I go on the dance floor, <laughs> or how many women I can see. It's all about how can I make his day better? How can I make her day better? How can I change who I am and what I do to make this a valuable union? You don't know what it is. You're mature people. You're people who have jobs. You work. You should work it out. Now, I'm not going to give you your, your uh, license back, because y'all ain't ready. But I'm going to send you to a counselor who's going to get you in a position to get ready. And that's what I hope you do. This Thank matter you. is adjourned. When I heard um, how Ron felt about me, I feel that we can make it, he can be husband material, that we really can go further in this. As far as the things that she didn't like about me hanging out as much, so what I'm going to do is work on that and start to come home more, put a little bit more time into our relationship uh, when I am home so that we can make this thing work.